Good evening, everyone. The time is 6.06, .06, and I'd like to officially call the SC-161 school board meeting to order. Roll call, please. Here. 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 And a quorum is present. Uh, the first item on the agenda are the proceed or audience comments. And I just want to, uh, because we have a lot of people here who would like to make comments, I just um, want to remind everyone that we um, have set aside a 20 minute period according to policy for audience comments, which, which means we've got, uh, I think, tw 20, 20 people signed up for comments. Um, so, of course, we want to hear from as many of you as possible. What would be helpful is if you can keep your comments um, as succinct as possible. Um, two to three minutes would be great. If somebody has said something that, that you're going to say and, and you've heard it already, maybe you can say that you support that comment or you support that idea. Um, but I just want to let you know in advance that we, um, would, we would like to, for you to keep your comments um, succinct and um, and we want to keep the, co the 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 topic of the basin to about 20 minutes which is just according to our policy um, okay so the first uh, person on the agenda for audience comments is mrs. Trump thank you very much for me allowing to have these comments number one I'm I'm totally approved of the detention basin and I'd like to make sure that it's in um, Heather Hills. Also, the people that did the streets. Could you repeat? Could you start again? I didn't hear. I'm sorry. I, didn't, I, can't, I don't know if this is working. So can someone? Yeah, just speak into it. Yep. Okay. Um, all right. First of all, good evening and thank you for taking this message. I'm in, I'm in favor of the retention can't basin. I am in favor of the retention basis. I would like to make sure that the retention basis is in Heather Hills. 
I'd also like to know that we had a wonderful construction team in 2022 that did the streets on Barrie. And I'd like somebody that's educated to do this. Our Army Corps of Engineers, people that, I mean, I don't know if any of the school board members have a civil engineering degree. But there has to have somebody that has common sense and knowing that has a common sense degree in civil engineering. We don't need any more flooding. And then on the note, none bid subject, According to the Illinois um, school code, it is important that, that when you do a, a bid, the bids should be according to the school code. They make sure that you bid the positions, you just don't give them away. We discussed this two months ago and now it's, it's on the bid again. Number G, honorable dismissal of a social and emotional learning coach. Now, that brings up to the fact that that learning coach is under the auspices of special education, which they're probably uh, reversible, uh, reimbursable. So why would you get rid of somebody where you're gonna be able to get rid of that money back from the state of Illinois? And it's very, very hard. I heard for the past six months how difficult it is for Flossmore to maintain quality teachers. Last month, um, March, March 18th, they were going to get rid of seven people. Why would you get rid of seven people that have known the, known the Flossmore schools, had a positive rapport with the students, and why would you get rid of them? I'd like you to think about keeping them in the honorable dismissal of the social and emotional. Please keep them, because they're, they're reimbursable by, by the state of Illinois. I'm sorry if I'm tongue-tied and I'm speaking quickly, because I want to make sure that you understand what I'm saying. Anytime you have a special education person that's qualified under the state of Illinois, they are re reimbursable. So don't fire them. And when I, when I had meetings with the assistant, with the, with the superintendent, they told me how difficult it is to find quality people. Then why are you letting the seven people go? So I'd like you to consider that. Because Flossmoor issues need those people. The scores are low in reading, the scores are low in math, the scores, there's truancy issues, there's chronic issues for, for absenteeism, and we need the social workers, so don't get rid of those people. I thank you very much. I do appreciate your kindness, and I did send my comments to the board earlier today because I have a, another board meeting that I have to attend. But thank you for listening to me, and I do appreciate your kindness. Flossmore has a history of quality education. We want to make sure that it stays quality education. We don't want it to go down. We want it to go up. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Hey, Rebecca Strypeck. Rebecca Strupeck, can you hear me? Uh, 815 Travers Lane in Flossmoor, uh, Flossmoor Park area. I'm, I'm a 46, thank you very much for allowing me to speak. I'm a 46, I'm a 46 year resident of Flossmoor. Four, four children all attended Western Avenue School where we were very pleased. I'm submitting 50 plus signatures of Flossmoor 60422 residents and mostly importantly uh, business owners on from Sterling Avenue and on Flossmoor Road. We support the plan for the much needed detention site which has previously been approved by the Flossmoor Village. The project is necessary to detain water during severe rainstorms that otherwise disrupt traffic, hamper emergency services, and interfere with access to downtown Flossmoor businesses. We applaud the administrations for their thoughtful and insightful solution to this chronic problem in our community, particularly obtaining a $10 million grant to help defray the costs of this project. We, I support Agnes's thought um, that we would expect an experienced license and approved civil engineering firm to undertake this project. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ashley Giddens. To the esteemed, to the esteemed members of the school board. Upon reviewing the Village of Flossmoor's letter to the school board dated March 11, 2024, where they were advocating for the project's approval, I noticed that my name is mentioned a few times within the document. 
It has come to my attention that email correspondence between myself and the village that's pertinent to this matter was shared with the school board, but omitted from the agenda for the March 18, 2024 Board of Education meeting. I am unaware of the specific content of this correspondence. Nevertheless, I am deeply concerned that the village of Flossmoor has potentially misrepresented my concerns regarding the project and the attachment provided by the village of Flossmoor. I am troubled by the unjust stigma that has been directed towards me simply for voicing my valid concerns about this project. However, I believe it's important to actually present my identity to both the school board and the community. I'm a mother, a resident of Flossmoor, an active member of the PTO, and someone with a sincere commitment to advocating for the safety and well-being of our community, which, which consists of the children who use the playground at Heather Hill Elementary School. I believe that every voice should be valued and respected in decisions that impact our community directly. The Village of Flossmoor has, directed to, has neglected to offer transparent information concerning this project, which has resorted, which, and resorted instead to attacking my character, insinuating that I am the sole individual with inquiries about this matter. It is crucial to note that over 300 signatures have been garnered over on petitions, clearly illustrating the widespread resident opposition to the project. Additionally, the Village of Flossmoor has failed to explain the scope of the project. While there have been meetings held off and on regarding the project since 2020, the detention basin at Heather Hill was vaguely mentioned, and when discussed, the minutes stated the basin would be behind the school. On January 23rd of 2024, residents learned the basin would be on the side of the school and would wrap behind the building of the school. On February 15th, 2024, I learned that the basin would be 650 feet long and 880 feet with a width of 180 feet. On April 1st, 2024, I learned that the basin would be 745 feet long with a width of 300 feet. The village of Flossmoor has continued to increase the size of the basin without engaging the community, while knowing the community is concerned about the children's safety as well as having space to, for them to run and play. Apparently, our concerns have fallen on deaf ears. I am concerned about, also, I'm concerned about the funding and cost of the project. The Village of Flossmoor stated they are pursuing $1 million from the MWRD. However, the president of the MWRD, Kerry Steele, informed me on March 14th that they are not involved with phase two of the Flossmoor Viaduct Road project. Secondly, the quote of $7.8 million for the project is from 2021. The Village of Flossmoor does not have an updated cost for the project. A quote, for 20, a quote that is updated for 2024 may be $30 million. While we have been told the other options were more expensive, we have not been provided with their estimated costs, and after learning the updated costs for this project, the alternative locations may be comparable in price, safer for the kids, and not take away green space from the children. Lastly, I am concerned about the true intentions of, the, of this project. When reviewing the mini, meeting minutes from the village from February 1st, 2021, the engineering company stated that the detention basin would not reduce the flooding at the viaduct. And also it was discussed that they wanted to pursue the, t the detention basin to obtain more grant dollars for the roads. So is this really for flooding or for the roads? More recently, State Representative William Davis provided the school board with a, later, with a letter stating his opposition to the project. Representative Davis is advocating for collaboration among all interested parties including the community and the village of Flossmoor to thoroughly assess all potential options for the project's locations. He has emphasized the importance of community engagement in the decision-making process, stressing that it is essential to ensure the protection of residents and address their needs and concerns. I respectfully request that the school board take into account Representative Davis's concerns and refrain from moving forward with the project until further discussions have been conducted with the community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Rachel Horton. Good evening. My name is Dr. Rachel Horton, and I wish to express my concerns as a parent of Heather Hill. My son graduated from Heather Hill, and my daughter will be a kindergartner there this fall. I walked past it today, and I was deeply disturbed. I could see the stakes in the ground and the orange flags tied around them apparently marking off the detention pond. I was horrified at how close it was to the children's playground. As a concerned parent, I would implore you 
to consider an alternative plan that does not put a body of water so close to young children. This plan will undoubtedly drive down property value, it will remove access to the tennis courts, and it will pose dangers that can be avoided. My husband and I moved here to raise our children in the safest environment we could find. Having this body of water beside a playground will take that away from us. Now, on top of all the other concerns parents have on a day-to-day -day basis, we have to concern ourselves with small children drowning. I'm asking you as a mom and as a resident to please find another way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Crystal Quaggett. Good evening. I'm not only a mother of children of Heather Hill, I'm also a resident. I literally look across the street, more so to my right, and there's the school. My boys play at the school, whether school is in session or when it's out. I spoke earlier in March, and what I have to say is, I honestly believe between all three boards, there needs to be a comprehensive, inclusive plan that's educated and discussed, not now, but actual plan when everyone is involved. Our children are the primary key stakeholders that this is going to affect. And I honestly do not believe with the amount of stakes that are out there that our children have been considered. All I can think of is when the kids are out there playing soccer, throwing a ball, whose arm gets stuck inside of a fence. I'll be honest, when I moved here in 2020, there was no talk of it. A year later, I do hear a talk of this coming. And honestly, I was disturbed because I thought there is no one with children, grandparents, aunts, uncles, or other that would want this massive entity encasing the school. It's not behind the school. Those stakes are to the north, to the south, and behind the school, and it's not that many feet away from the sidewalk. So what actually are we giving them? I believe that whatever this plan is that can be better, it needs to include something that the children can continue to have, whether that is a community garden. We can use that water. We can make another type of monument on Flossmore Road where the art piece is going to happen. I do believe we need to add more basins, maybe smaller, not this massive just here. Yes, I've went down to Highlands. I've seen that particular one. Yes, I went to Belantre. I've seen that. Yes, um, I've been over to Flossmoor High School and I saw that one. And honestly, when I look at the school, I look at the beauty of it. We have fall and winter. That's dry whatever that is that's going to be there. It does not look beautiful in the winter time, at least not what I've seen down on Highlands. And I still continue to see water that sits there. So even if it doesn't reach the 12 feet, we don't know how long that water is going to stand there. And let's say it is, it does reduce it from nine hours to five hours. We don't know if that's gonna be the daytime when the kids are there after school and things like that. And I really do believe we need to really first take those key stakeholders, our children, and yes, we do need to consider the businesses, but I don't think anyone at the business wants something to happen to anyone's kid at the rate of their business going under either. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Kelly Davenport. Good evening, members of the board and members of the community. My name is Kelly Davenport O'Donohue, and I have resided in the school district for 47 years. I'm here this evening to join the other 300 plus residents of the school district who are in opposition to the village of Flossmoor building a detention pond on the grounds of Heather Hill Elementary School. There are many reasons to vote against this. This is an easy no. The first reason I believe this board should vote against it is that in my opinion, solving the infrastructure problem of a municipality is not what the members of this board have been elected to do. I have visited the School District 161 website where the duties of this board are clear. One, deciding what should be taught in the schools. Two, hiring necessary personnel and setting their salaries. Three, providing and maintaining school buildings. Four, approving all contracts and paying all bills. And five, arranging for revenue necessary to operate the district. How does this issue fall within those duties? One may argue it could be number three, providing and maintaining school buildings. However, again, referencing your website and school board meeting minutes. 
Last year, your own long-range planning committee convened and using consultants inspected each of the school properties in the district and presented improvement recommendations to the full school board for consideration. None of those recommendations cited the need to construct a detention pond on the grounds of Heather Hill in order to adequately maintain that building. <clears throat> This is clearly the village of Flossmoor's problem to solve, not the school board. And in my opinion, any action granted to allow the village to move forward using school grounds is out of line and outside of the scope of what the public has elected you to do. This is an easy no. This board should vote against the development of a detention pond on school grounds because the village of Flossmoor has not been forthcoming with all stakeholders. This includes residents, business owners, state legislators, the Army Corps of Engineers, and the Metropolitan Reclamation Water District. In fact, they haven't been transparent with this board. They have failed to answer specific questions that have been asked by this board and others. The Village of Flossmoor has led some to believe that there are no alternative options to the detention basin. Not true. When called out on it, their response is that the alternatives are double in cost. Not true. The village of Flossmoor has been selective and has spun their narrative regarding this project based on their audience. And each entity has been told a little something different in order for the village to obtain the so-called buy-in that they want the community to believe they have. It has caused me to question the credibility of all parties involved. I personally find it hard to believe that anyone would think it's okay to have a 12 foot deep detention pond with the capacity to contain 5 million gallons of water within feet of an elementary school. There are too many potential dangers. This is an easy no. The Flossmoor School District website states that although the board is politically responsible to district voters, is legally responsible to the state. I want to highlight the words district voters. At the same time, I wanna highlight the absence of the word village or city or municipality. District voters, the people, the public, the community. In an extremely short period of time, those of us in opposition of the detention basin have managed to secure the signatures of over 300 district, district voters who are aligned in opposition. Sure, there are businesses and homeowners that the Village of Flossmoor have noted concern for, but other residents of the school district have said it's a hard no, including the residents that reside on Barry Lane. As elected officials, these are the voices to whom you're politically responsible. You don't vote against your constituents. This is an easy no. Last, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the stakeholders that don't get to come to the table and advocate for themselves, the children. I mentioned them last because they are the most important and the thought that I want to leave you with. If the children of School District 161 can't count on this school board to hold their safety in the highest possible regard, who can they count on? The state and the school board have protocol in place in schools that when you believe that harm is being done to a student, it is reported, no questions asked. But who do the children turn to when it is their own school board that is the perpetrator of harm? Who do the children turn to when their parents' voices are disregarded by the very individuals elected to represent those voices? Who do the children turn to when they are mourning the loss of a sibling, a classmate, or a family pet? Who among you cares about the children? If you do not want to prioritize the children or you're unable to prioritize the children, you shouldn't be on this board. This is an easy no. In closing, I would urge you to stick to your role of setting the standard for achievement in the school district and determining what students should know and be able to accomplish at each grade level. Stick to your role of being accountable for the performance of the schools in the district. Stick to your role in hiring personnel. Stick to your role of providing and maintaining school buildings. 
Stick to your role of approving contracts and paying bills. Stick to your role of obtaining revenue necessary to operate the district. Stay out of messy village of Flossmoor politics. Make the village explore other solutions. This is an easy no. Thank you. Thank you. Ken Corbett. Good evening, everyone. Did you hear me that little okay. bit? Sometimes. Born Coltrane. <clears throat> I'll say it again. Born Coltrane. Was found drowned in a retention farm. I didn't hear you. Born Coltrane. Was found drowned in a retention farm. Doesn't matter where it was, when it was. The pond was very close to an area where students were. Now I see the moniker here that says, engage, inspire, empower. We'll add to that, protect and care for our students. This is only an example, <clears throat> but do we want our grandchildren, children, nieces, or nephews to be that next example, that next Oh well, it, it, it only happened five years ago, but it may be yours. The pond in question is way too close for our, your children, to be exposed to. Because as we all know that have children, know that in a split of a second, just a split of a second, that can be out of our sight and into something. That's why we childproof homes, and some of them are already smart enough to get over this childproofing. We are bound as educators to protect our children. With that said, are we really, really protecting our children, your children, by putting this pond in such a close proximity to a school? I understand we're citizens. I understand that um, there are other things that come to mind as citizens, protecting our property, you know, stopping flooding, or whatever the purpose is that is going to be there, but at what risk? His name is Born Coltrane, and he was my great nephew. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Patrick Keating. Good evening, my name is Patrick Keating. I am a 24 year resident of the Heather Hill neighborhood, a 20 year volunteer on school boards in the archdiocese, um, and an attorney with 30 years of uh, experience in complex technical litigation. Um, I will try to be very uh, solicitous of the time that we have. Uh, I would note that, of course, it is within the discretion of the chair to extend both the 20 minutes per subject time and the 30 minutes time. And I think that's one of the themes that I would like to discuss very briefly is transparency. There's the letter of the law, there's the spirit of the law, and then there's transparency. And I appreciate that we've been given this opportunity. Um, the, the bottom line here, first, uh, I would be remiss to say that my friend and neighbor, John Yeast, uh, arrived late and was not able to get on the schedule. He asked me to present another 103 handwritten signatures. These are different from <laughs> Carolyn's. Uh, thing. Although I know my signature's on both, so I can't tell that they're completely separate. And I'll just read it very quickly. As a Flossmoor resident, School District 161 parent, or concerned citizen for the welfare of our community's children, I am deeply troubled by the proposed removal of our local tennis courts to make way for a huge 12-foot deep water retention pond around Heather Hill School. The safety of our students is paramount, a water retention pond could pose potential hazards that we could avoid. Residents want to maintain our property values by enhancing the attractiveness and functionality of our community. We urge local authorities to reconsider this decision and find alternative solutions for water retention without compromising these valuable community assets or jeopardizing student safety by finding an alternative location for water retention. I'm happy to submit this, um, that these are our originals, so we may need to scan them, but 
they are certainly available. Um, I was asked by several of my neighbors to take a look at the proposal. Um, I'm not an engineer, but as I said, I, I do technical litigation, so I'm fairly used to looking at these type of documents. And I looked at three in particular. One was a uh, one-page summary that I recently, uh, that the village has been circulating called Flossmore Road Viaduct Drainage. It, appear, it appears to try to break down into bullet points um, why this should be voted for, and it specifically mentions that it, this is pending Flossmore SD-161 agreement. The, um, there are a lot of issues in here. The safety issue, the fact of the matter is, you're always going to be on the opposite side of the viaduct from Flossmore Police and Fire Department, and I would hope that you have already dealt with uh, in your emergency management plans how to deal with that, dealing with the Homewood Police Department or any emergency responders who are on that side. And it's not just flooding. You could have any sort of disaster. You could have a truck. You could have um, a train derailment. There are, this will not solve safety, and I, I personally feel that trying to counter the safety of students drowning argument with the safety of emergency responders argument is a bit of a red herring. Um, my main issue, though, has to do with the facts that were provided in this document. This document, and I have a couple more copies I'm happy to circulate, is essentially fact-free. It's a lot of opinions about why it's a good thing. There are almost no numbers. One of it says that the project has an estimated cost of $7.8 million. In the materials in your packet from the last meeting, there's a lengthy document from the engineers. Now, it is from 2020, and so it's almost four years out of date. And I would note that in the last four years, we've seen record high inflation. So if you see the number 7.8 7 million, assume it's 10, 12, 15 million. That's the cost. Now, even so, even cherry picking the numbers, the best the village could come up with is that this is going to cost 7.8 million and is going to provide a benefit to the downtown area, including the business owners whose businesses I also love to support here in town, of 5.7 million. So their best numbers on a cost-benefit ratio are a non-starter. We're going to spend $7.8 million now to maybe save $5.7 million over the next 20 years. So the numbers are way out of whack to begin with. They get much worse, though, when you realize that the document that uh, was also submitted in your packet, this uh, FEMA benefit cost calculator, it's in your packet, but I have some copies of this, too, is essentially a work of fiction. Um, it, it, first of all, what it does is it documents the uh, 2017 and 2019 flood issues. The 2019 flood issue um, was, depending on the analysis of the village's own engineers, was either a 97-year flood or under, I guess, modern uh, global warming things, a 44-year flood. So we are talking about spending $10 million in jeopardizing the safety of the students in order to um, basically deal with a once-in-a-generation flood. I've spent much more time delayed at the intersection of Flossmore Road and Sterling because it was Kiwanis uh, Tootsie Roll Day than I ever have because of flooding at that viaduct. Um, but the, the numbers are fiction. And, and this FEMA report is not from FEMA. It's apparently using a software tool. I don't know who, I don't know what staff member of the, uh, the village did it. Um, they were uh, at worst grossly negligent, or at, at best grossly negligent, and at worst, uh, let's just say not transparent. They cut the, the damage to the uh, civic building in the flood was a total of, depending on the numbers, again, in the FEMA report, between $100,000 and $140,000. When they filled out this calculator to come up with the $5.7 million number, they counted that same $120,000 damage nine separate times for every single storefront that uses the civic building. So it's, that's absolutely ridiculous. They then added a couple more million dollars by coming up with numbers based on oh, delayed traffic, and everybody had to drive five miles out of their way, and assessing time. None of those factors, none of those insanely inflated numbers where they come up with the 5.7 million have been assessed to determine how much time is going to be lost to traffic problems for months and months and months of heavy construction, digging up of, of our roads and things like that. I would also point out that there is, um, 
there are, there are real issues. This is a really naughty issue in terms of conflicts of interest because the engineers proposed up to nine different alternatives, several of which involved uh, direct drainage into Butterfield Creek, which sounds a lot more logical than creating a new body of water. Um, but they also involved them putting them over by Western Avenue School. Whether that was considered politically untenable or whether that would have it hurt the property values of people on this board, there are a lot of issues here. But basically, uh, I started off dismayed when I reviewed the, uh, the documents, and especially the FEMA document, and I ended up disgusted. This was a complete lack of transparency. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Nancy Rice. Hello, my name is Nancy Rice and I wrote a letter. I took a copy to the mayor, but my letter is to uh, Mayor Nelson and District 161 board members. I would like to read it at this time. It says, Dear Mayor Nelson and District 161 board members, my name is Nancy Rice and I've lived in Flossmoor in the Heather Hill area for 47 years. My children all attended District 161 schools and the Homewood Flossmoor High School. I am very familiar with this area and I strongly disagree with putting a detention basin on the Heather Hill school grounds. I live right down the street. I live on Alexander Crescent and I'm uh, very attached to the school. Please do not put a detention basin on these grounds, mainly for the safety of the children. This act will pose a life-threatening risk that our whole community will regret if something happens. Children use this playground every day. They especially use it on the weekends with their parents and friends. I often take my grandchildren there. The engineers say that the basin is perfectly safe, but don't forget they said that about the Titanic. <laughs> An article in the March 1st 2024 Homewood Flossmoor Chronicle stated that the basin is designed to hold water for nine hours and will empty after a rain event concludes. Empty where? I hope not into our sewer system in the Heather Hill area that is often clogged after a big rain. Please do not do this to us. I had a water disaster, a sewer disaster in my home 19 years ago, and it was terrible. The cost was over $25,000 to repair, and the State Farm Insurance didn't even want to uh, pay for it. And if you don't have certain clauses in your insurance plan and something happens like that, and your house gets flooded from, with sewer water, then they don't want to pay if you don't have certain uh, clauses in your insurance plan. The 12-foot water detention basin will also bring down the values of our homes. People looking for a home most often are looking at the school district. They will hesitate to purchase in an area that has a large, no trespassing, water detention basin on the playground of the school that their children will attend. The current residents that I've talked to do not want it also. Please vote no for this basin. Now, I know that we want to uh, get this water out from under that viaduct. I love all the stores in downtown Flossmoor, but I ask you, please, look for some other way to take care of this matter. Not put that basin on our school ground and do this to our children and our property. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. 
Shaneka Stanley. Good evening. Good evening. Can you hear me? Hi, Shanika Stanley, um, parent of a Heather Hill student, um, Heather Hill resident, of course, and a member of the PTO board. Um, as a member of the board, we have been engaged in conversations about this detention basin for over a year. We've met with the mayor, looked at the one at HF. We have, you know, been at the meetings, been at the community meeting, all the all the things of the village, right? So all the things. I'm very well aware of the need. I was here in 2019 when Cold War Banker was flooded. We've seen the viaducts flooded, so. 100% understand the need for, to find somewhere for this rainwater to go, right? But this is not the right solution. The safety of our children is not worth it. As you know, the gentleman spoke before about his great nephew, like when, what if that happens to one of our children? It's unacceptable, it is not a good solution. They came up here and told us all these other solutions that were not viable, why? Because they were more expensive. You found the money for this, find the money for that, yeah. right? It's all about what, what's worth it for you. It's not worth it for my child who goes up there, get, gets on his bike and plays with his friends. What if somebody's ball goes over the fence? Or their kids, what if they're playing truth or dare? I dare you to jump over the fence. Then what? And then the, this basin has gone from nine feet deep to 12 feet deep, from 600 feet wide to all around, taking up all of the green space. As a member of the PTO, we host events. We've had movie night, we have back to school fest, all these things that use that space around the school. So no one cares about that, right? We just want this dead grass and this fence to do the rainwater. But use the more expensive option, right? Find the money. We find the money for anything we want to do. That's personally, that's professionally. I tell the village of Flossmoor to find the money to do the other options. Butterfield Creek we've talked about. We've talked about Western Avenue. But apparently Heather Hill is the best option because it's cheaper. It's, it's not worth my child's life. And I know it's not worth any of your children's life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Heidi, I'm sorry, I can't read the last name. Is it Quest? Quest? Okay. Uh, Sharon Turner. I don't, have, I don't have any papers. I haven't prepared anything. I just want to ask the board to vote no for this water retention project at Heather Hill School or in any school in our community. Thank you. Thank you. Allison Foster. Good evening, Allison Foster. Um, I am a 11 year resident of Flossmore. I have one child who graduated from Heather Hill. I have another one still there. I'm an active member of the PTO. Um, I'm also a pediatrician who works in Flossmoor and I take care of a lot of children at Heather Hill Elementary School and in the neighborhood. My concern, as was stated earlier, is, is largely for the well-being of the children. And not just physically, I think we've talked about that, we understand our concerns for the safety risk of their well-being. I am very concerned about their mental well-being over time. We know that there are many studies that have shown the effect of lack of, ac of accessible and usable green space and its effect negatively on the mental well-being of children, in particular increasing the amount of anxiety um, that they have. And as a pediatrician who does deal with this on a daily basis, I'm very concerned about the impact it will have on our children. I do ask that you all consider that. Also consider the fact that many of us in the neighborhood use that space um, for, with our families. I know I certainly do with my kids, especially when they were younger, we'd run around that space. We use the tennis court. So that's one of the things I love most about our neighborhood and our community. And I, I ask the board to really consider this when you make your vote. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Leo Shibakan. Hello, good evening. Um, so my son actually asked to speak. So I'm going to have him say a few words. My name is Dio Lao Shibakan, and I would like you to not do the detention basis me and because me and my friends play on the grass at recess every single day and it would make me sad if you took that away from us 
Thank you. Thank you. And that's my De son. Oh, awesome. Devin Gib Devin. Okay. Gibbs. Um, to the Flossmore School Board, I appreciate the opportunity to speak before you all again. One thing that I think is important, as some of my other neighbors have spoken already, is that we do understand the significance of the stormwater issues in our community, but that is not at the risk of harm to our children. My family moved to Flossmoor in 2000, in, in 2022, and we, like so many parents, were seeking better academic opportunities for our children. For us, this was and still remains one of the most significant decisions we have made. The decision was not only in choosing a school district, but a school, a neighborhood, a community, and a home to nurture and raise our children. After more than a year of looking, we chose Heather Hill. Since our move, we have been proud Heather Hill parents. That pride comes in seeing and experiencing and acknowledging the extreme attentiveness and care that comes from the adults whose daily responsibility is the education and care of our children. That pride is felt as we roam the Candyland theme halls on steam night and when we watch our children perform on stage during the Heather Hill Black History celebration. The Heather Hill teachers, staff, and principal go the extra mile. They go above and beyond, and many of them are pictured on this wall behind us. They affirm our children. They make sure that they feel seen and feel heard, and that their feelings count and matter every day. But what happens to that sense of pride when the excavators drive in and the dump trucks roll in? What happens to that sense of pride when the tennis court is torn down? What happens to that sense of pride when the children return and an iron fence surrounds only a fraction of the school grounds they knew? What happens when they begin to ask questions about the why? Why their school? Why them? Will they still feel seen? Will they feel affirmed? Will they feel that they were prioritized? And what answers do we have to give them? Today as our school board, you have the power to write the end to this story. I hope that in this moment in our shared history, this will be one that is noted as a time the residents, parents, and school board stood together to advocate for an innovative solution to the stormwater issues. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mora, Mora, is it Mora Mayer? I'm sorry. Morning. Sorry, I couldn't read it. Morning. Sorry. Hello, good evening, everyone. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. My name is Maureen Mater, and I own Dunning's Market in downtown Flossmore. And I just wanted to take a minute to um, reiterate the importance of uh, flood mitigation in the downtown area. Um, I'm hearing, I have heard, you know, uh, the damage wasn't as devastating, but uh, it was extremely devastating. All the buildings were emptied, Coldwell Banker left, the other businesses never went back in business. Uh, three businesses were gone completely in that 2019 flood. And so I would like to just ask you to consider that when voting, um, I do know that three, you know, it's been three uh, administrations have promised some type of solution to the flooding issue. So, uh, and we had heard a long time ago about the Butterfield Basin. These ideas have been around for a long time. They weren't just dreamt up in the last year or so, because I know about them and I've been around for like seven years. So again, thank you for your time and uh, your consideration in this matter. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, ben Theory. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Ben Theory. 
have a child at Heather Hill, and we have a three-month-old here. There are a few words that come to mind when I think of Heather Hill. Words like community, excellence, belonging, humanity, safety, home, kids, and family. That's a dream. We get to live a dream. Don't turn this into a nightmare. Vote no. Are we gonna be a community that truly values and protects the kids? Or are we going to be individuals who happen to live in the same area? Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Henry Parker. Good evening to everyone, to the audience and uh, to the board. This situation is not about me, not about you, it's about us, all of us. And I know for a fact that being in the community almost 30 years now, that we are concerned about what happens in Heather Hill. And I just wanted to say briefly, the school block is a sacred block, period. That's the way it's defined in the codes, the Administrative Code of Illinois, uh, 23. Uh, the problem that we're trying to solve is all of our problems, but particularly for the school kids. I was here long enough to know about the young man who left Heather Hill, went around Lawrence Crescent, and drowned in his pool mm -hmm. behind his home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To build a, a pond that we have no information, at least I don't, about how you're going to uh, take care of it. I have found no place in Illinois where the school board, in all of its power, and this is where we have to come, have made a variance for this type of project. Mm -hmm. It just does not exist. What you're doing right now is asking the, uh, the, the uh, representative of the state of Illinois to change the code. The decennial a review is going to be in another few years, every 10 years. This is a bad idea, period. Our kids are more important, and it should be important to all of us. Ms. Benning, I go to your store, all the other stores in our community. That Bible has been flooding for all the years I've been here, yes. period. Yes. Nothing has been done about it. If you're going to make a variance, make sure that you make it for the right reasons. Do not jeopardize our children. They're not only our future, they're parents' future. They're my future. Heather Hill, the school districts, I had no one in 161, but I had a young daughter in 233. It served me well. That's why I moved to the community. We want to keep it that way. This pond is not going to solve our problem. We need to go back to the board, come up with a solution. It's going to be tenable for each and everybody in this room. That's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Leroy Perry. Okay. Uh, now, Cal. We're done, except Kelly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just one. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. My name is Tara Daly. I'm also a member of the PTO. I just actually have questions. Um, I saw, I've heard a lot of comments, but I just have questions that we may not receive answers on in terms of this project. I'm, I'm really sorry. I wasn't taking notes fast enough. Can you give oh. me your name again? Tara Daly. Thank you. Sorry, go ahead. So just three questions. Do we know how many special needs children we have within the um, Heather Hill School as well as within the 
area um, that will be near or close to the uh, detention pond. Has there been research done behind the amount of schools with detention ponds in Illinois? Will Heather Hill be the only school with a detention pond? Do we know the answer to that question? Have you guys taken a look at additional cases, maybe not within Illinois, but within other states of where there have been additional drownings, as was pointed out earlier, of children that have similar detention ponds as uh, the detention pond that's proposed for Heather Hill with a six foot fence, et cetera. So those are just my questions, no specific comments. I think everything that's important has already been stated. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Kelly Brown. So I'm up here for two reasons. One, I do want to talk about the retention pond. So good evening. Good evening. But I don't want to talk about it on the side of it being built. I want to talk about on the other side of the kids getting hurt. So I moved out to Fosmore for four years and I fell in love with the community. I absolutely loved it. I moved out here because my children, two children, went to private school. And HF was the closest I can get to a similar atmosphere, even though it was three times as many kids, four times as many kids as a private school, without it being such a culture shock. So my children graduated, and I had to move back to my mom. And then I got a job at Heather Hill. So now I teach at Heather Hill, and this is my second year as a third grade teacher. Um, First of all, just for the people who are here, anybody lost a child? Not a, not a relative, but a child. Okay, great. I have, but not to drowning. Nonetheless, the aftermath from dealing with a child of a sudden loss with a permanent constant reminder in your backyard as to where that child is now no longer here because of that retention bond is horrific. Absolutely horrific. Because these children, if it happens, when it happens, they now get to look out in the backyard and see this ginormous hole in the ground that removes the life out of a sibling or a parent has to look at the hole in the ground that removes the life out of their child as a constant reminder. That is horrific. It's, and it takes forever to get over. If you, I can't even say get over. I lost my child two and a half years ago. Gun violence. She was young, 19. I left the last school I was at because that was the last place I saw her alive. Couldn't handle it. Came to Heather Hill. When I walked into the building and I saw the camaraderie of the teachers, I was amazed. I don't fall in love easily, but I fell in love with Heather Hill. I saw Tamika and some other teacher posting posters up on the, the, the secretary's boards as positive reminders for Secretary Day. I loved it. I met Miss Ashley. Fell in love with Miss Ashley and she fell in love with me. I was a good fit for them then. I felt like it was home to me then. These kids feel like it's home to them. School is a safe haven. It is where kids come to feel safe. But you remove this green background that I get to look out of my window every day, which is serenity, because green is a sign of serenity, a grass playing field is a sign of serenity. Sometimes we see the um, people walking their dogs past my classroom window. Sometimes the kids will run behind me, even though they're not supposed to, and knock on my window while they're outside playing down, playing. They won't be able to do that now if you put a detention pond back there. You're taking away part of their imagination, part of their playtime. They're already playing on the computers way too much. They're already on top of the iPads too much. They don't go outside enough as it is, and a part of outside that they do have access to, you're about to take that away. Absolutely not. The second thing I want to come up here and say is that Heather Hill, from the time I got there, has been a home for me. I have enjoyed and learned so much from the teachers that are there. I have been a requested teacher from the time I walked through the door. I have gone to more sporting events. I have gone to more activities outside of school. I have developed relationships outside of school with the parents that are here. I have created characters for myself and my kids in my classroom. But I have to unfortunately say that I have been asked not to come back this year. And the only reason why I was told is that I'm not a good fit. 
and I think on a professional basis, I deserve and demand more respect than that because none of it came as if I had any idea it was coming on the pipeline. My observations were fine. And if there was a residual concern, it should have been conveyed to me and it was not. And I feel it's unjust and unfair. Now, I know Illinois is an at-will state, and I get it. But as the kids say at my big age, I think I deserve more respect. I think I deserve more gratitude for, for my services. I've been doing this for over 20 years. I'm good at what I do. Damn good. I am very, I'm very capable, I am very qualified, I am very cre creative. And if the school had allowed me, which they could not because of the stipends, hopefully that will change, I would have opened up a sign language class as an after school curricular activity for these children, for which I do once a, uh, with the kids for certain activities that they are involved in. I am very fluent in sign language. And I feel as an educator, I use that to help my kids further themselves in education because I can give them tools in sign language as another means to understand and learn some things and can make them contextual instead of on the computer. So sign language is big for me. But this school is about to lose out because these kids are not going to learn sign language. They're getting, rid, they're getting rid of a qualified, engaged, uh, loving, compassionate teacher. Yes, I am a hard teacher. I'm not going to lie. I hold these kids accountable, as they should be held accountable. But at the end of the day, my kids love me. When I came in here to get an interview, my second interview, 20 minutes, the class was hugging me and did not want me to leave. 20 minutes. That's the impact I left on these kids. But now I'm being asked to leave. It's not right. It's not fair. So I asked the board to reconsider. If that means put me somewhere else, I'm okay with that. But I was not given any concrete data, as this is a data-driven school, to tell me why this decision was made. And I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know why. I don't know why. I have no rhyme or reason, and it is unjust and unfair. I'm not the only teacher, but if I'm the only one here speaking up, if nobody's going to speak for me, I will speak for myself. Thank you. Thank you. All right, the next item on the agenda is the superintendent's report. Well, good evening, Board of Education, audience members in person and those who are joining us at home. Uh, this is our first Board of Education meeting after spring break, so let me be the first to welcome all of you to the last eight weeks of the school year. Uh, it seems like a short amount of time, but we have a lot of work to get done. We, we're going to keep our feet on the gas pedal. We need to make sure that our kids are catapulted into the summer so that they're prepared to join us again in the fall. Uh, as most of you are, are well aware, today was a total eclipse, and as a district, we provide all of our students in classrooms with approved glasses to view the sun and the moon. In addition, we shared lessons and activities that teachers could use with their students to enhance the learning opportunity today. I hope all of you had a chance to check it out. It was actually really cool. Uh, science in action is always a great opportunity for all of us. We know that the next uh, total eclipse won't be in our area for the, you know, until 2045, so it was really important that we take a, every opportunity when they arise for us as a school community. For student activities this week, uh, we have the Heather, Heather Hill fourth and fifth grade choir performance tomorrow. Uh, that's Tuesday the 9th. That'll be at Heather Hill School. And then on Wednesday, April 10th, beginning at 6 p.m., we have all District 161 elementary schools hosting our elementary STEAM night. It will showcase how our students use science, technology, engineering, arts, and math uh, in grades K through 5. And then on Friday, we have, that's April 12th, we have our pre-K students will participate in the pre-K prom, which will be held at Parker Junior High at 6 o'clock. And then finally, just one bonus event this weekend. On Saturday, April 13th at 4 o'clock, we do have the new resident mixer at the Flossmoor Library. 
love to use that opportunity to connect with new community members, new parents to District 161, form those initial relationships as we're welcoming people into our school district and community. Uh, it is the last quarter of the school year. There are tons of events, and if the board members would like to attend any of them, please let me know. We'll make sure that we get you the time, dates, schedules, tickets, anything like that. That's the end of my report. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Okay, the next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. May I have a motion to approve the consent agenda, including personnel report 24-014, payroll for the month of March, Board of Education meeting minutes, and the FOIA requests. So moved. Second. Can we, uh, can we pull a personnel report out for sure. the consent agenda and um, do a quick discussion of that in the executive session since we okay. have one scheduled? Um, and then come back and vote on it? Yeah. Okay. Who wants to pull? It's the last one. What do you mean? Just the last five actual items. Oh, no, my question is much more narrow than those five items. But, um, but just as a matter, that way we can capture it. So it's nothing. Okay, just we uh, but when we go into executive session, let's let them know. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah for sure. But let's pull that one and then G through. Okay. Okay. So okay. We'll just come back. So the motion. So I need to amend my motion. I well, rescind the motion. <laughs> yeah. So the motion. Uh, so I'll, I'll move to uh, approve the consent agenda items B through D, but not the personnel report. Mm -hmm. I would like to make a motion to approve uh, the consent agenda items B, C, and D. You're seconding. So, oh, yeah. okay. I'm seconding. Roll call. Question. What do, what do we do? What, do, what, do, what, do, what just happened? We're voting. I think I, 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 think I know what. You, I motion. have a question on the personnel report. It's a very narrow question. Right. So, so the because, motion because of that question, I've asked that it be pulled out of the consent agenda. I got that. So, so now we're just voting on the rest of the consent agenda. B, okay. Items B, C, and D. So what are we doing with G and the other? Nothing Those yet, are later. Nothing um, yet. We're going to remove them as well. What, what will happen is... So we have an executive session scheduled today, and and we'll end up voting on G through K after, after that. Right. And then, I, yeah. okay. I, I understood that part. I just want to be clear on what the motion was. That's all. And I just want to clarify. My narrow question doesn't actually have anything to do with those items, but just for sake of good order, it'll that'll have to get pushed. So you're seconding. Yes. The motion to remove those items. Yes. Just sure. the one so item. The We're only dealing with the consent agenda right it's now. It's just a motion to approve the consent, three, three of the consent agenda items. Okay. That's the motion. Thank you. Roll call? Lanier. Yes. Rouse. Yes. Childress. Yes. Ibarra. Yes. Helson. Yes. Lindstrom. Yes. Frick. Yes. And the motion passes. Okay. Okay, now we move on to the action items. May I have a motion to approve the easement request from the Village of Flossmoor as presented? So moved. Second. Any questions? Yes. Um, I actually want to um, to share. I gotta find it. Give me a second. Um, I, in, in light of everything that's been going on. Um, I prepared, prepared a little something, something to hopefully shed some light on this before we vote. Um, I'd like to start with um, a definition. So one, um, healthy conflict resolution is a readiness to forgive and forget and to move past the conflict without holding resentment or anger, ability to seek compromise or see the other person's side and avoid punishment or expecting a bad outcome. When people work together, it's only natural that they have conflicting ideas on how to approach a task or project. They clash due to differences in personalities and beliefs, as well as misguided emotions. Conflicts can be beneficial. You need to learn how to navigate it and steer any disagreement into a healthy, constructive direction. 
I thought that that was fitting to say what I'm about to say next. Um, how do we get here? The, well, the village of Flossmore is seeking an easement um, from 161 school board on the Heather Hill property. Should we be here? Um, this is another matter. The BOE is charged with issues of education, not designing, not engineering, and not evaluating village projects. I'll attempt to summarize some of the arguments that I've been presented with um, and heard, which are facts and, and again, issues because that's why we're here. I've talked to the mayor, hello mayor. I've talked to the trustees, some of which are here. I've talked to various board members. I've talked to businesses, residents, the superintendent, parents, teachers, children, the Heather Hill PTO, village staff, the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District, Army Corps of Engineers, Senator Harris, Senator Representative, I mean State Representative Davis, State Representative Mary Martin, um, Mary Martin, I mean Debbie Myers Martin. I've spoken to Cook County Commissioner Monica Gordon, the Flossmoor Fire Department. I've spoken to the Chicago, the City of Chicago Heights. I've spoken to Homewood and more. My point is that I've reached out to everyone personally on this issue of the detention basin. Some people think this beautiful. Some wonder why the village didn't involve the community before. Some want the village to collaborate with the community. And some are surprised that the project is even being considered next to a school. Some want something done. And some have regrets. The village has approximately $15 million for the project with access to another um, $5 million, which is a total of uh, $20 million. The recent referendum was for $10 million, and um, or about $2 million of it has been allocated. The proposed detention basin is an estimated $7 million, of which about $6 million pending from federal levels and community funding projects. The majority of the funding project is, out, is being outsourced, and that means it will not come from the referendum. How did we get here? Um, there have been varying priorities. Um, one, to minimize the time and the impact on the Flossmore Road, um, which, which we all kind of encounter, and you've heard about that. Another um, reason we're here is to spend the majority of the referendum money on road repairs. Doing this is better than doing nothing is also a position I've heard. Um, it was supposed to be that the Heather Hill community didn't use the green space. That I'm seeing, hearing and seeing isn't true. And this was conveyed to the village trustees and the village. The Heather Hill community got involved in this position and here we are today discussing petitions arising toward 400. Local elected officials have spoken out about this project. The village has responded about the project and thank you very much to the village for responding. Is there another option? Yes many and most of which are cost effective as well that they are not part of the village alternatives which are listed in the letter. So what are those looking like? There's the underground storage, there's the Maryland Avenue sewage uh, disconnect, there's the Sterling Avenue um, backflow per, um, perverter, there's the supplement of Sterling Avenue sewer, there's the viaduct drain modification, there's expansion of existing basin throughout. There's a clean existing um, f uh, feeder to the um, Butterfield Creek. There's a repair to Butterfield Creek. There's a north conveyance and a south conveyance. There's the Army Corps of Engineers study alter alternatives to A, to 3A, 4A, 5A, 6A, 7A, 8A, 1B, uh, C7, C8, C9, just to name a few. The village could decide to phase this project if they want to into stages. The village can continue to find collaborative solutions if they want to. This is not a must-do-now project. With the proposed Heather Hill Detention Basin, um, will the proposed Heather Hill Detention Basin fix the flooding problem? No. It is designed for a minimum of 10-year um, occurrence. Um, anything greater than two inches of water over a 10 year period approximately will still flood the viaduct. Fixing the viaduct requires a 100 year flood conveyance design of approximately seven, year, seven inches of rain over 20 hours, which is what happened in 2019. The village couldn't meet this requirement 
if it chooses to do such an expansion? Why weren't we informed and asked? Where was the communication? Where was the community involvement, et cetera? The village will say that that happened in June of 2020 and August of 2020, although those were bond hearings in February 2021, and then they'll say it happened in March of 23, March, uh, May of 23, and August of 23. All of these dates have been discussed. I get that. But what, whether or not these proposal basins were discussed or not didn't occur outside of the fact that we also had a COVID during that time. Whether it was a bond discussion, whether the village um, community or the entire Fossilman community was present, invited, or knew about these meetings is the issue. The community is speaking now and is involved now. This is not about transparency as much as it is about engagement, being heard, and a part of a decision-making uh, process. So what I'm trying to do is inform everybody that this is not the only solution and that there are other affordable ways to do this as I was asked. Someone said, David, please try to outline what happened and is happening. What about safety? Concerned with inconvenience was, was an issue for the, for the village when it came to flood, flooding. What that means is that the village wants to make sure the people on one side of Vodok can operate and operate on the other side of Vodok and get back and forth. The, 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 if the flood, Vodok floods, it floods. This does not fix that problem. Access to emergency <laughs> vehicles. This one I'm going to really try to re refrain from because this was hurtful for me. I've talked to the fire department um, yesterday. I spent an hour with them. The captain himself and two other fire f firefighters informed me there are plans to deal with this. They told me they have worked with the district to deal with this. They told me that the district is prepared for this. So unless the fire department is lying to me, then I'm just telling you what they told me. Can you clarify what that was, though? Because I'm, I'm unaware. I, I'm happy to do that after I get done with this. But my point is that there are plans in place, so this is not just about an emergency access issue because the fire department and I'm sure the police department have actually already fixed this and addressed this. So my point is that this does not still fix the flooding issue. It's only, again, an issue that people are looking at. Well, this is why we have to do something. What about the safety of the Heller Hill children? You've heard about that tonight. The potential risk to um, Western Avenue versus the definite risk to Heather Hill is not acceptable in my opinion. Private businesses and um, the private residencies and their, their damage, I understand that. And again, it's something that we do need to address. I appreciate the fact that the uh, Village of Flossmoor has already gone ahead and to put together phase one, which is for Barry Lane, um, and address it with a five-year occurrence. But this does not go beyond a 10-year occurrence, and this does not fix the problem. My conclusion, the village has a historic flooding problem. There is money to address it, and the people would like to see something occur to mitigate the flooding problem. The village is proposing a five million gallon detention basin on the Heather Hill property. This is not a solution. This is not effective. And I would encourage all of our board members to vote no on this issue. Thank you. Mayor Nelson. Hi, thank you so much for having us tonight. I know it's getting late, uh, but I did want to make a few comments. Um, thank you for your service, too, to the Southland. This is not an easy job. I know that. I'm, um, I'm really Question. looking forward. Point, point of order. Um, Mayor Nelson asked to speak, and I said that it was okay. Similarly, I, I, I didn't have, I didn't. Oh, she I raised her, that yeah. interaction. Yeah, she raised her hand, and I said okay. So flooding at the viaduct and along Berry Lane is an issue that has plagued the village for decades. We can all agree on that. Every 15 to 20 years, the village commissions a new study to determine how to provide stormwater relief to residents and businesses. Then the village completes projects throughout town based on available funding and the extent of the damage that the floodwaters cause. 
As it relates to Heather Hill and the Flossmoor Road Viaduct, those areas are directly tied to each other and located in the same basin. In that basin, we have made all but two improvements over the past 40 years. We have added upstream detention to the Governor's Highway Triangle, detention at Levin Avenue Park, improvements adjacent to Parker Junior High, detention along Kedzie Avenue, and most recently, a small amount of detention under Barry Lane in anticipation of the second phase, which we're here to talk about tonight. Additionally, to help the Heather Hill neighborhood, we added detention in Southeast Heather Hill. Yet there are still two elusive projects that have been recommended in the 1985, 2005, 2020, and 2022 studies, and they are flood relief for Barry Lane and the Flossmoor Road Viaduct. Those two projects require the most funds of all the previously mentioned projects. Funds for those two projects have not been available until now. Thanks to the efforts of residents who passed a bond for streets and storm management, staff, the village board, the Homewood Flossmoor Park District, and state and federal legislators, we now have the resources to mitigate this destructive cycle and provide significant relief to residents who live in the Berry Lane project area, commuters and first responders traveling through the viaduct, and business owners in our downtown area. Half of the nearly $8 million price tag will be funded from grants, with the other half coming out of the remaining bond funds for this project. In fact, thanks to Congresswoman Kelly, we found out late last week that an additional $750,000 will be routed through the Army Corps of Engineers to support this project. The funds for these two areas have taken us nearly four years to raise, four years. In, that, in an area that is already heavily taxed, our multifaceted solution is the next best iteration of flood relief projects in the village. Working with the community to create the best possible outcome for all stakeholders is definitely crucial for the success of any public project. We have responded to concerns raised by several community members in the following ways. There was a concern about the distance between the playground and the detention area. Previously, the playground was approximately 30 feet from the detention area. We were asked to create additional space between the playground and detention area and found a compromise to fulfill this request. By reconfiguring the basin dimensions, the distance from the edge of the basin to the playground is now 55 feet, which for those of you who are looking for a, a, an explanation as to what that is, this room is about 40 feet wide. So an additional 15 feet is where the basin will be from the playground. Here in Flossmoor, there are several detention areas next to playgrounds in Ballantrae, Levitt Avenue Park, and Flossmoor Park. Additionally, detention areas are located in several neighborhoods adjacent to residences. A small sampling throughout Chicagoland shows that detention areas near elementary school playgrounds are not uncommon, and a quick search of some north side schools led me to find some dry bottom detention basins at the following schools. John Jay Elementary School in Mount Prospect, Henking Elementary School in Glenview, Glen Grove Elementary School in Glenview, Betsy Ross Elementary in Prospect Heights, Westmore Elementary in Northbrook, Jackson Elementary in Elmhurst, York Elementary in Lombard, Stevenson Elementary School in Lombard, Middle Fork Primary in Northfield, and only one with a fence, which is Sunset Ridge School in Northfield. I also found a couple of standing water detention areas next to schools, Maple Elementary in Glenview, and the Gardner Pre-Kindergarten School in Oak Brook, which, by the way, does have a fence. Speaking of fences, it was also requested that we include a fence around the detention area. And although there are no requirements to fence a dry bottom basin with this design, and although other Flossmoor playgrounds, which are located as close or closer to similarly designed detention areas, do not have fences, we will install a six-foot-tall decorative metal fence around this area to help alleviate those safety concerns. Removal of the tennis courts was also a concern, and I don't blame them. I love tennis too. Part of the funds of this, for this project will pay for brand new courts. The Homewood Flossmoor Park District has already agreed to transfer the land needed for the detention area, and they are committed to building new courts in Highland Park. 
We were asked to provide varying education for students, and we will provide educational signage that highlights the importance of native plantings in our local ecology and some of the animals and insects that may be spotted in our habitat. Speaking of animals, we do not expect a surge in wildlife as there are already areas near the tracks that serve as habitats. We will also educate students about the importance of proper stormwater management and functionality of the basin to protect the properties of neighbors from flood damage. Now, there seems to be some confusion about the basin being a dry bottom basin, meaning there typically will not be water in the basin. 99% of the time, the detention will be dry. Though for more frequent storms that are two to 10 year storm events, of which there have been 12 events in the past four and a half years, there will be water in the basin. However, it will drain within nine hours. Cost is also a consideration for us in planning future projects, especially here in the south suburbs where our property taxes are already extremely high. Because the volume of storm water that we need to move is too great to directly place into Butterfield Creek, we were left with three main options to consider. The first was installing a pumping station and an underground detention in Flossmoor Park. The second was installing over 3,000 feet of 30 foot by 10 foot box culverts underneath Flossmoor Road to serve as detention, which would lead to a small 30, by 30 to 36 inch pipe outlet that released water into Butterfield Creek at an acceptable rate. The third option is the Heather Hill detention option that is in front of you today. However, underground detention is extremely expensive and adds about $15 million to the total project cost, which we simply cannot afford. The village board decided that a $20 million project that does not provide improved storm protection is not inherently respectful to the taxpayers who are already paying high property taxes. Speaking of funding, we have received significant funding for this project. This project has been reviewed and approved by FEMA, the Illinois Department of Natural Resources, MWRD, the Illinois EPA, the Illinois Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity, and the Army Corps of Engineers. And thanks to the support of Congresswoman Kelly, Senator Durbin, Illinois State Senators Napoleon Harris and Patrick Joyce, and Illinois State Representative Will Davis, we have assembled nearly $4 million in funding over the past four years. In the letter that was mentioned earlier from Representative Davis, he said, the residents must also understand that delaying the current mitigation path, if there is substantial rainfall, could lead to increasing damage to both homes and businesses, as well as increased costs to the village, which could manifest into increased property taxes on the entire community. Further, property taxes could be impacted if current residents and business owners feel the village is not adequately addressing community needs and decide to leave the community. If this project is not approved here tonight, we will have to reapply for funding and bonds, which kicks the can down the road at least another four years or more. Additionally, project costs will undoubtedly increase during that time, and we cannot guarantee this type of extensive support will ever be possible again, as funding tends to be cyclical. The question about the level of protection has been raised. 10-year storm events are design standards, and yes, we love to have more than a 10-year uh, storm protection. However, we are a heavily built community and do not have the available storage space and purchase of additional underground storage is cost prohibitive. Additionally, we cannot simply dump runoff stormwater into Butterfield Creek unrestricted. That would negatively impact our neighbors. Projects that create adverse downstream conditions are simply unethical, irresponsible, and increase the village's liability. Thanks to the first phase of this Berry Lane project, homes are protected for up to a 10-year flood. However, if the second phase does not move forward, 25-year storms will result in flooding of approximately one dozen homes and streets in the entire project area will flood with storms greater than a five-year event, restricting access to approximately 50 homes. And I'm sorry, Miss Lily Lacey and Valencia Harris, both uh, Berry Lane residents, submitted support letters that just came in at the beginning of the meeting, so I hope that you'll have a chance to read those. 
In addition to residences there, are residences, there are also a dozen businesses that will benefit from the improved coverage, and I'd like to thank and rec recognize our amazing Flossmoor business owners, some of which are here tonight and work tirelessly to breathe life into our local economy. There was also a question about connecting to the MWRD TARP project. However, that system is located several miles away in Thornton and used uh, for systems that combine sanitary and storm sewers. We are lucky to have separate sewer systems here in Flossmoor and are just managing the rainwater with this project, which also means we're not eligible to connect to that system. I'm aware of the online petition that gathered 285 signatures. 65 of those signatures were from, I'm sorry, 65% of those signatures were from an area that covers from Frankfurt to Munster, Indiana. Indiana. The other 35%, 35% came from outside of that area. How many of those folks were from Flossmoor? Last, we addressed why all of the alternatives that Trustee Lanier brought forward earlier. We have $5.6 million remaining in bond funds, plus another $3.9 million in grants. Residents are expecting those remaining funds to cover both flood relief and streets, and I think we can all agree that Heather Hill is in desperate need of road repair. Support from the school board is the last remaining part of this decades-long effort, and our fate literally lies in your hands. We've had over a dozen public meetings, uh, three to four dozen letters that went out to residents, articles, newsletters, posts, your board, and to your board and the public since 2020. There is widespread support from residents. 80% of our voters in 2020 voted in favor of this $10 million bond to repair roads and reduce flooding in Heather Hill and the Flossmoor Road Viaduct. The assembled grants will help us stretch our dollar and accomplish a great deal more of infrastructure work than we ever dreamed possible. With your vote in support of granting an easement to the village for this project, we will be able to move forward together and provide much needed relief to Heather Hill and to the village of Flossmoor. And tonight I have with me our senior project engineer, Matt Moffitt from Baxter and Woodman, our director of public works, who is also a professional engineer, Mr. John Brunke, and our assistant fire chief, Matt Burke, to answer any questions that you have. Thank you so much. I know it's a late uh, time and I just appreciate the time to talk. Just, thank you. Just thank real you. quickly, Mayor Nelson, thank you for your your comments and first off I want to thank the entire community for coming out and expressing your concerns and your thoughts with regards to this particular project. Uh, from the first time I became aware as a board member about this project I had one very straightforward request and that request was simply that you provide clarity on the project. This is the third time that a group of people representing the project of planning has presented to the board. I still do not have clarity. The reason clarity is lacking is because the story has changed each time. That makes it very difficult for me, even if I was in favor of the basin, to vote yes, because it's a moving target. I can't make a decision that put kids in danger when the target is moving. I've been told that, no, it's not a solution. It might sometimes work, it might not other times. That the basin, which we've compared to other schools, and quite frankly, it's semi-offensive, because the basin that's being built to this school is gonna be 10 to 12 feet deep. The other basins that we've talked to, I live in close proximity to, I've never seen it, even when we've had massive rainfalls anywhere near 10 to 12 feet deep within 50, 60, 100 feet of a school. That is problematic. The fact that we can't come forward and say, hey, look, we've been aware that this was the best alternative for us as a village four years ago, five years ago, whatever the time frame was, that would have been the appropriate time to bring in the school board so that we can participate and collaborate and in my conversation with State Rep. Will Davis, he insisted that's the best way to move forward, is to have that type of collaboration from all stakeholders on the front end of the conversation, not on the back end. Here we are on the back end, trying to make a monumental decision. A monumental decision. 
Yes, there are financial concerns, but we're also talking about children. There's nothing we have that is more precious than our children. <laughs> As a member of the school board, it comes down to priorities. What's our priority? I've actively sought out ways to support this project. I've talked to numerous people. I even hired an expert. My expert is my daughter, who attended Heather Hill. And I picked up the phone and I called my daughter. I said, what do you think about a retention basin being built next to Heather Hill? She said, oh, I would have loved that obstacle course. Because she assured me that her and any of her friends that listened to her on a regular basis would have made every attempt possible to climb that fence and be a part of that base. I tried to explain some of the other concerns, but at the end of the day, it was very clear to me that this was a significant safety risk to our children. The other thing that was clear was, I didn't have the clarity I had been asking for. And the third thing that is clear is the sequencing of events. We've done it backwards. We should have had the school board on the front end of the conversations, not on the back end. And because of those reasons, even if I wanted to vote yes, in good conscience, I couldn't. Thank you. My, my concern has been very clear from the beginning. It's clarity. The first meeting where they came out and spoke, I said, look, there's a need for clarity. When the proposal was first presented to me as a part of the board, I was told there would be no fencing. I, I asked a simple question. Does that make sense? Is that safe for our children to put a basin that's going to be 10 to 12 feet deep anywhere from a 2 to 10 year storm occurs? Is that safe? Is that wise? Is that feasible? Does that meet the standard that we need to have for our children? No. And we agree to put the fence in. But the point is, it shouldn't have to have been from us that that came from. Um, Assistant Chief uh, Matt Burton talks to the safety. Would you like him to? No, I don't. Okay. Thank you. Any other board members with questions? Yes, I have a question. Uh, Mayor Nelson, good to see you. Thank you for being here as well as I'd like to acknowledge everyone who spoke on either side um, and that is here and spoke so passionately. Um, I think one of the points that um, hasn't really been spoken to that one of um, the speakers did actually make mention of is the loss of green space. Um, if you've gone over there, you realize that it appears that 80% of the backyard of the school is being essentially taken away, right? And so as homeowners, and I definitely love my outdoor space. If 80% of my backyard was taken, I'd have some significant um, concerns. Um, and so I'm thinking about the children of Heather Hills who, who participate in activities outside, want to run and play, do activities. Um, I think there was mention um, for the PTO, utilizing the outdoor space. Um, I think everyone knows that kids want to run and play. Has there been a contingency plan on where kids can play um, in response to 80% really being taken away from them because it's being fenced off by this very, very large and unfortunately, I mean, with all respect to the problem that we're trying to solve, very intrusive to the community of the Heather Hills. Sure. So Dr. Smith, um, I, in a previous meeting, mentioned that that land back there is mostly marshy um, and it's filled with big spiders. So um, kids don't play back there anyway. Um, but it will still, but it will, it will still be green space because it will be planted with native plantings. And anybody who's seen the uh, Cherry uh, Creek Detention Area just west of Governor's Highway will see just what a beautiful uh, space that is. 
and even some residents who were previously not in favor of that project, now they love it. They take their family photos with that as a backdrop because of all the beautiful <laughs> colors that are in the, in the fall. And uh, they're very happy that the, that project, even though their home wasn't being flooded, that that project specifically is helping their neighbors um, provide flood relief so that their homes aren't destroyed. Um, so there will still be the same amount of green space. Um, it'll just look different. And I think the governor's highway is a great example of what that's going to look like. Okay. Thank you, Mary Nelson. Thank you. Any other questions? I have a question about, um, thank everybody, of course, for coming. I don't want to not say that. Um, how deep are the other basins in Flossmoor, right? We brought up Ballantrae. We brought, do we have any debt on those? Most of the other basins in Flossmoor and Ballantrae and um, the neighborhood basins, they're shallower. They're typically probably about six, eight feet deep, probably, okay. without having the numbers in front of me. The Island Park Basin to the south of uh, the school in Heather Hill is a deep basin as well. That's probably about 12, 15 feet at the deepest part in that uh, um, in the back corner of it, where there is a permanent pool volume now in that basin that always has water in it that's about three, four feet deep. Okay, thank you. For reference, can you comment on the depth of uh, Levitt Park? Any other questions? No, okay. I also thank you, uh, Mayor Nelson, and thank you everyone who um, came to share their comments. I, I just, I want to make it really clear that this board is very aware of our responsibilities and our children come first. I, I don't think any one of us would ever intentionally have a desire or, or, or or be okay with children being put in harm's way. I just wanna make that really clear. The children of Heather Hill and the children of the entire district are our responsibility. And we would never want to put any child in harm's way. Any other questions? Okay, roll call please. Rouse. No. Agmara. Yes. Childress. No. Wainstra. Yes. No. Nelson. Yes. Griggs. Yes. And the motion passes. We shall overcome. Okay. Next, next item on the agenda are the bills for the month of April. I review the bills for the month of April. review the bills for the month of April and I'd like to make a motion to approve the bills for the month of April in the amount of one million eighty four thousand ten dollars and twenty nine cents second roll call please yes 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 and the motion passes uh, may I have a motion to approve the non-bid summer projects for the summer of 2024 at a cost of $108,000. So moved. Second. Roll call. Children? Yes. 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 The motion passes. May I have a motion to approve the Blue Point upgrades at a cost of $78,650 and an annual fee of $11,380. So moved. Before we vote, Kim, you had a couple of questions last time. Did the, oh. oh, I added a bump out in the report. Uh, a couple of pieces on this one. Real time mapping of the buildings along with pole stations that were activated and the cameras in that location. Uh, actually I have a follow-up meeting with the village this week on that project separate from this so regardless of what we do on the camera side uh, the first responders will be able to access the individual cameras individual users can identify 
uh, location and status updates within the building, and then uh, does provide, I would say, digital one location storage for uh, crisis documents, safety plans, et cetera. Now, they do offer some support with the reunification, but I think we're gonna go with a different solution to that, meaning we had to evacuate, you know, Flossmoor Hill School, they're at HF, how do we get all those parents back with their kids effectively? This can assist with that, but I think we're gonna use a different solution. Okay. Okay. Thank you for the update. I second. No, I, I motioned, oh, sorry. Yeah. Second. <laughs> no, I did not. Okay, he roll second. call, please. <clears throat> <coughs> yes. 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 And the motion passes. May I have a motion to approve the custodial and technology help for the summer of 2024 at a cost of approximately $81,200? So move. Second it. Roll call. I'm sorry, which item are we voting on? E. 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 Yes. Childress? Yes. Lanier? Yes. Ibarra? Yes. Yes. Nelson? Yes. Grace. Yes. And the motion passes. Let's see. May I have a motion to approve the 2024-25 Board of Education meeting dates? So moved. Second. Before we do that, just one item. I, it may have been... Board member Lanier asked about crossover. I did verify that there are no, well, with the village of Flossmoor, we do not have any conflicts until we get to December of 24. Then we have- Between now and- Between now and December. Otherwise, okay. the meetings are on opposite days. Okay, great. All right. Roll call? Wheatstraw? Yes. Nelson? Yes. Lanier? Yes. Ibarra? Yes. Strauss? Yes. Children? Yes. Yes, and the motion passes. And so we are waiting on G through K, right? Okay. Yeah. All right, so are there any questions regarding the information items, which is just the financial, February financial reports? If there are not, then we're gonna go to executive session and then come back to vote, correct? Correct. Okay, so may I have a motion to go to executive session? So moved. Oh, wait, for yeah. matters related yeah. to personnel 5 ILCS 120 two C one and matters relating to litigation 5 ILCS 120 slash 2 C11. Correct. Sorry. Did you say personnel? Yes. Hmm? We yes. don't have a second. Yeah, we need a second. Second. Oh. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So we are coming back. Yes. We will come back and take action. I can't predict how long we're gonna be.
the board meeting again. So moved. <laughs> Second. Okay, ro do I roll call? Yes. Roll call, right? Nelson. Here. Lanier. Here. Childress. Here. 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 Uh, here. Okay. Um, may I have a motion to approve the personnel report 24-014? So moved. Seconded. Roll call. Lanier. No. Rouse. Yes. Childress. Yes. 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 And the motion passes. Okay. Now, may I have a motion? to approve the honorable dismissal of social emotional learning coach and ending and ending funding for ESSER positions, reemployment of first, second, third year probationary teachers, reemployment of accelerated tenure for third Yeah, can you yeah. We can do them together. Separate these. Okay. May I have a motion uh, to approve the honorable dismissal of social emotional learning coach and ending funding for ESSER positions. So moved. Second. Roll call. Rouse. Yes. Ibarra. Yes. Childress. Yes. 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 Nelson. Yes. Grace. Yes. And the motion passes. May I have a motion to approve the reemployment of first, second, third year probationary teachers? So moved. Second. Roll call. Ibarra. Yes. Nelson. Yes. 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 The motion passes. May I have a motion to approve the reemployment and accelerated tenure for third year probationary teachers? So moved. Second. Roll call. Childress. Yes. Please yes. 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 The motion passes. May I have a motion to approve the reemployment and tenure for fourth year probationary teachers? So moved. Second. Roll call. Nelson. Yes. 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 The motion passes. May I have a motion to approve uh, the resolution for dismissal of first, second, or third year probationary teachers? So moved. Second. Roll call. Yes. 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 No. Yes. Yes. And the motion passes. May I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. 